I have been stalling on doing Nightmare Raid a lot to the point where like I'm scrambling at the last day to get it done. So I'm going to go ahead and get it done a little bit early and we're going to make a video out of this as well to detail some of the more up to date teams that we use on this. Now, I thought about doing a really deep in depth guide on how to uh, how to do this with uh, full auto teams and how to do this with free to play teams and how to do this with speed teams and I, I, I kind of mapped it all out and it was going to turn into a like six hour video. So I'm just going to run through good, fast, solid teams. What I think are the, the easiest, most reliable, clear teams on it this time around. Okay. So first let's talk about the easiest fight to do. And that is nightmare queen. Now in another video, I detailed using Ein's Ulgon and Seedom to one-shot it. And there are some complaints where people said, hey, I just don't have the uh, the gear to one-shot it. And I found that you don't need to. This is still the best team. So Ein's just needs six pieces of gear. It doesn't really matter what you put on this guy as long as he has a 100% crit chance. Other than that, he can just gear hold. I mean, he doesn't even really have sets on. Little bit of bulk. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit so he doesn't die. Tamarin, in a perfect world, you want her to have 200% effect resistance so that she doesn't get silenced. The last thing you want is for your Tam to be wearing a silence when she's trying to use her S2 skill. You can supplement that with an artifact that gives you ER if you can't quite get there on your own. And 105 effectiveness is the target so that you can strip. If this means she's going to be soft or slower, that's fine. You don't need to be this strong. You don't need to be this fast. So 105% effectiveness is really all you need and a little bit of bulk so she can survive. Don't worry about speed tuning her or damage or anything else. I have her on candlestick to cycle her skills. And last on the team is Challenger Dominial. You do not need her to be on a rage pen set. If you can get her on a rage set, that's great, but it's not required. Um, the Caladra artifact is ideal for this. If you don't have it, you can just use our beautiful seasons or you know something else that boosts damage, but 30% damage dealt when you're hitting somebody with debuffs too good. And the boss is going to be wearing debuffs. Other than that, just stack attack and crit damage. Don't worry about crit chance too much. Don't worry about speed too much. Uh, you need 50% crit chance and you know, she can give herself crit chance right here and the EE, I don't think really matters. Just have her on an EE for the attack bonus. We're not going to use, you know what? We're not going to use, we're not going to use him at all. So I'm going to take Tom Cruise because he doesn't get to be used anywhere. So he can come along for the ride since we're not using the guardian at all in this fight. Okay. After I've hyped this team up, I hope it works. <laughs> So because Tam is not first, you need to not hit the queen because we need to have Asaria reset her as the first round. So just hit an egg sack or something. Then you can have Asaria reset your Tam. And then you can just, uh, there's no reason to try to wait to generate souls because that attack right there just steals all your souls when the, or oh, sorry, when these eggs hatch. Yep, there go all the souls. Now Tamarin is ready to transform and push everybody up. Now the tech to this fight is remember every time Ainz attacks, he AOE crits. You can soul burn Ainz for additional AOE crits. And every time there is a crit on an enemy, it pushes Seedom up and boosts their damage. Because Ainz can burst it, you can really push the damage through the roof. Let's go ahead and S1 and strip. That's why you want the 105 effectiveness on Tamarin is for that strip on her S1. Ainz's barriers help with some protection. 
Let's go ahead and strip again, and this time we'll get buff block. Hopefully we get buff block. And a defense break would be nice too. Oh, we got buff block, but no defense break. We're actually going to eat some hits from Ainz. Don't you love 15% in PvE? Um, I'm just going to ditch this attack into a B. Ainz's S3 cannot inflict death sentence. You'll notice the queen is immune to death sentence, but what the queen is not immune to is dispels all debuffs on the enemy. Nice. I was going to have to use the S1 here to strip if that didn't stick, but this team is so loaded with strips, it makes it pretty stable, even with 15% happens. Reset our TAM again. need to go around the horn one more time on Tam and we should be good to go. Look how hard C Dom hits. Isn't that crazy? Ditching into the bees here because I don't want to over damage. Now I'm ditching into the eggs so I don't do any damage at all. Try to get buff block back on here. Nice. Cam can push everybody back up. The hardest part's making sure your Ainz doesn't over damage, right? Okay, now that our TAM is reset, we are good to go. That strip's really annoying. Okay, so... Normally in the one shot, what you're trying to do is stack it up so that Ainz can really, really hyper boost her attack so that she can one shot the queen, but it doesn't, who cares? Who cares if you one shot the queen? Just burn and hit her and look how hard you get her. Bam! Didn't one shot her, but it took us all the way down to the 25% mark. You just make sure you're ready to do that when Tam is ready to transform and you run this like a normal fight. It's fat. It's so fast and so consistent. So for everybody that was watching the one shot video and thinking I can't build a seed on like that, who cares? Fence break. So instead of a one shot, it's a two shot. Bam, and it's over. Just like that. I mean, we do have to weather the storm of all these bleeds, but it's not that big of a deal.
Oh, the Vera, um, Secretary Vera. Warlock just asked, when are we getting Vera as a unit? Yeah. Secretary of Vera looked good. I swear, when I first saw Secretary Vera in human form, I thought it was ML Bologna. So I think this is probably the fastest, cleanest, easiest way to deal with this. There is so little RNG. You've got a strip on Ions' S3. You've got a strip on Tam's S1. Um, you got a strip on Asaria's S3. Everybody chews through this so quickly. And even if your CDOM doesn't one-shot, who cares? Just hit it a second time, and it's still dead. It's my new favorite way to beat Queen. Every other team, I'm cussing about 15%. I'm getting annoyed by RNG. This one has been so fast, so consistent, and so clean. And you don't have to ramp up for a thermonuclear CDOM. You just... You saw how hard that CDOM hit. And if your CDOM is shambles, if your CDOM is significantly worse than mine, again, who cares? Do three shots. It's still full clears. Okay, so next let's talk about the Juleve Council. I still think you want a Soul Weaver for this. Either Destina, Rowana, or Ray are your three best options for a Soul Weaver. We found that you can do it without a Soul Weaver, but it is not super consistent. Galilius is my principal DPS unit, and Zahak is my secondary DPS unit. Your third DPS unit, you can use Laia, you can use Vivian. I still prefer Bologna. The Jewel Leaf Council is not immune to damage from HP based attacks, so Bologna, her S1 hits like an effing truck. We can put her on Daydream Joker. There's one. So I've just got her on a base destruction set with Daydream Joker. I know a lot of people are like, oh, but Bologna is loaded with debuffs and you, you, Julie Council, you can't put debuffs on it or it makes it really hard to beat. Uh, yes, but no. This team kills so freaking fast you don't care about the debuffs. And the debuffs let you get through the break phase like that. Because in the, in, in the split phase where you're fighting three of them, you can debuff it to hell and back and it's fine. Um... If you really, really, really want to speed this up, you can take Galilius off of her artifact and put her on Daydream Joker as well. But really, um, Portrait or Wind Rider work just fine if you are not one to like moving gear around. And the same with Zahak. There we go. If you, uh, if you don't want to take Zahak off his artifact, you don't want to re-gear for this at all. Works just fine, but you really want to speed through it. Put everybody on Daydream Joker. Uh, I just got asked, what's the substitute for Gala? Substitute for Gala would be Laia or Vivian. Either of those would work great. Really any high-end DPS unit that doesn't do debuffs. Um, theoretically, Kazran is the guardian you want to take on this because of his ability to cleanse. But much like with the queen fight, you're not going to be using your souls for anything other than the fights. Um, another replacement for any one of the DPS units is you could slow it down and put Rowana on the team. It'll make you a little bit more stable. It'll just take longer. The important is that you have either Gala or Zahak on the team because they have one soul soul burns, which makes them really, really good for cleaving through this. You guys are going to love this. This is a crazy fight. Okay, so we're going to give an attack buff to Bologna and push her up. I'll never get used to clicking on the numbers on the opposite side. Okay, so we got to get down to about 65-70% 60, to cause the first split. So we're going to just burst some damage into it quickly. Got about 5% damage off of that hit. Watch this hit from Bologna. Bam! Look how much harder Bologna hit than Zahak's S3. That was Bologna's S1. <laughs> Crazy how hard that girl hits.
Um, I'm just going to S1 here. There's no need to use my push yet. Watch how hard Gala hits now. Of the three of them, holy crap. And we're into the first break phase. We hit this mosquito up front. I'm just going to use the S3 to get rid of all of these venoms, or those are venoms, right? Plagues. Same thing. Now, this is where you can drop your Bologna's S3, because if you get a defense break... Oh, uh, on every... We didn't get the defense break on the one we wanted it to go on. If you actually get the defense break, and they do have zero effectiveness here, so... Yay for RNG, but that hit kills <laughs> if you get the defense break. But we're still out in plenty of time. Bologna uses her S2, so we don't have to worry about defense. Oh, now you get the defense break. Good job. Okay, so now we just need to get down to the next break phase before the B uses its ultimate and puts all of the horrible effects on everybody, right? Gala's S3 is ready again. Let's drop that in. Look at this damage. So good. On Daydream Joker, holy crap, she hits so hard. We're already almost there. We'll go ahead and use the S2 on Bologna to give her attack buff. Drop the S3. Just gonna use this to heal up and get the plagues off of Gala. And we're <laughs> She was going to go next anyway. The dual attack wasn't really that important. Even without the defense buff we got pretty quick now on the final stage you get this noxious noxious toxicity level by 50 anyway the frowny face to get rid of the frowny face you soul burn every time jewel leaf takes a turn he gets his frowny face back level one's not that big of a deal but by the time it gets to level two or level three it can start one shotting units I, i'm going to go ahead and burn just to get rid of it here I'm gonna s2 myself because uh destina is actually kind of hurt here And this bee really hates Destina. Well, S3 Gala for more big damage. <laughs> so good. Bam! <laughs> this is such a clean and safe team. You can see why Gala is a very important unit to have here with how fast she bursts it down. But if you don't have Gala, you can bring a backup healer and just let... Zahawk and Bologna chew through it, or you can put Vivian on the team for some additional damage. I think if you don't have Gala, I do prefer Rowana on the team for the additional healing, though. Very angry now. And very dead. And that's Jewel Leaf Council. So a couple of different options if you're missing units, but uh, a very clean team. Let's do Executioner Carcanus next, right? For Executioner Carcanus, first you want a unit who has a lot of ER up front. I'm going to use Angelic Montmorency. You can use Amelia. You can use DN. I've even seen people use Elena. As long as she is a high ER unit who can cleanse and can help keep the team healthy, that's the unit you want in the front spot. Anytime a blue 
boss is up. It's kind of criminal to not use Brieg. So we'll take Brieg. We're going to take Shu as our principal damage dealer. And I'm going to take Ran as a defense breaker. Now, we got two defense breakers, Ran and Brieg. We've got two strong DPSs, Brieg and Shu. We've got Momo for cleansing. And you need to have a reliable AoE unit to get rid of debuff, or to get rid of the stealth. Ran's going to be that unit for us. Brieg, although he can be a unit to take care of the stealth, he is a little RNG, so you don't want to rely on that. Now, if you don't have or don't want to use Ran, you can use Lua in his place. Lua has defense breaks on her S1. She's also a guaranteed strip if you soul burn her skill, just like Ran is, so you can use her to remove the stealth as well. I just like Ran because mine's built with a bit of damage and he helps move things forward, but either of them would work just fine in that position. As for Shu, any good solid ice DPS unit. I mean, just she's got to be ice, but any good solid ice DPS unit would work here. But this is the team that I'm going to use for this. So Angelic Montmorency, just make sure she has 200 ER. That's all she needs. 200 ER and, and enough speed to cycle some turns and, and enough ass that she doesn't get murdered on the front row. You could replace her with any ice soul weaver who does these things, has the ER and can keep your units healthy and keep the uh, debuffs off. I'm not a huge fan of Angelica because immunity just gets stripped. I like Momo because she can cycle and cleanse, but Amelia, Amelia would work. Elena would work. Any ice weaver that you've got, uh, DN even would work. My principal DPS is the rat. Counter set is not necessary. Uh, instead of Golden Rose, because this is Labyrinth and you're not fighting Queen or Vera. Queen and Vera, by the way, are the only ones that are immune to Daydream Joker. Everyone else, you can take Daydream Joker into them and do much more damage. I've just got her on the EE. That gives her more chance to do swoosh. If you don't have Brieg, load up a secondary DPS or a secondary AoE. You know what? I'm 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 not going to be lazy. I'm going to go ahead and change him to Daydream Joker as well. Just why not, right? Why leave damage on the table? But he he was fine on his own artifact. Um, needs to have 35% effectiveness. Remember, his passive gives an additional 50. That gets you up to 85% effectiveness, which gives you your max chance. So as long as he has 35% effectiveness, you're good. This is my normal RTA ran. You do not need a normal RTA ran. He could be 250 speed, okay? As long as he is built um, and on the team, that's all he needs. A little bit of effectiveness to make his defense breaks land without soul burns would be nice, but you're probably going to soul burn him when it's his turn anyway. I'm just going to leave R and L on him because Rand never loses. Uh, but since mine's built for damage, I actually could put him on Daydream Joker. Again, theoretically, Kazran is the best guardian because there might be situations where using him to get rid of debuffs will allow you to clear the stage, but chances are you're not going to use Kazran. Chances are you're going to soul burn Shu because a lot of people forget Shu's S1 has a passive just like Spectre Tenebrius, where if you soul burn her, she gets an extra turn. So you get the thing set up right and you can literally soul burn Carcanus to death. Okay, so I'm just going to S2 to give everybody immunity. And we got some time before he stealths, so we'll just drop the raw S3. See that? Resistance, resistance, 
That's why you want Momo up front with her uh, effect resistance. Uh, Brieg Lux sacked his, uh, his resist, so there's no need to cleanse. So I'm just going to put one of these spider things to sleep. Nope, he resisted me. So we get the barriers up with Brieg's S2, and we try to get a defense break with the S3. Resistance, in 15% in PvE, amazing guys. But we got the slow debuff at least, smack. RNL, Rand never loses. Drop shoes S3, stack her focus up. Is she focus or fighting spirit? I can never remember. Okay, I'm going to S2, but I'm going to save my S3 because once he uh, once he goes stealth, I need a reliable AoE that I can use. I'm using S2 here mostly for the self-CR push off Magahara's Tome. Get him, rat. S2 here for extra damage. Again, S2-ing more for the CR push from Magahara's Tome than anything else. Okay, I've got a debuff. If you're wearing a debuff, you can't attack Carcanus. Well, you can. But if you attack Carcanus while you're wearing a debuff, you'll self-cleanse all of his debuffs and immediately counter your whole team. So try to avoid hitting Carcanus when you're debuffed. Now, a dual attack or a counter attack won't trigger all that nonsense. But anyway, we're just going to ditch this into the spider here. Now you notice that went into Carcanus. Although it stripped him, it didn't trigger his AoE counter. And uh, that should push him into stealth. And this is why we didn't use Rand's S3, is we need to get rid of that. And we need it to be a guarantee, right? It would have been a guarantee to get rid of stealth because he's not wearing a barrier. But if, like, this spider had gone, his ultimate is he put a barrier on Carcanus, and just a raw S3 wouldn't be enough to break the barrier. So, I'm going to burn it now, just so that I can... Actually, am I? I'm going to save my souls for Shu. I don't need to burn it, because I don't have to worry about stripping the barrier. So, we're just going to do this. This will hit. This will hit, and the hit itself will drop the stealth, and we can start doing damage again. And I put you to sleep. No. There's the barrier I was talking about that would have made me, would have forced me to burn Ran. Just S2 shoe. <clears throat> Gonna S2 to help cycle these debuffs off. I can't hit Carcanus because I'm wearing debuffs, so I just ditch it into one of the ads. Ditch this into one of the ads. Gonna S2 for the CR push from Magahara's Tome. Rat hits. Ran hits. Dual attack, nope. Okay, he is stealthed up again, but my Ran is getting ready to go. Oh, never mind. Brieg hit him, so that pulls the stealth right off. And a good thing, too, because the stupid ad hurt my, uh, or debuffed my Rand, so I couldn't have hit him anyway. Stomped on by the rat. Okay, now that we've got the speed buff here, once you see that, he will never stealth again. So you don't have to worry about sandbagging skills for speed for uh, stealth. We've only got one debuff on both these units, so I'm going to use the S2 to cleanse them. CR push myself. Hey, we got the healing buff. 
Can I get a two turn defense break, please? Nice. Okay, it's gonna S2. Ah, uh, I hate that we lost the defense break. Look at Shu on DDJ go. This, if this had defense break on it, this would be so much cleaner. So if I had the defense break up, that would have full cleared, but it is what it is. My ran is 308, but like I said earlier, you, he could be 250 speed and work just fine here. He just needs to be on the team. His speed is not really that consequential here. And that is that. Again, a very clean and consistent team. I really like this team. It, it feels safe. At no point in time do I feel in danger. The only thing that you have to have to remember is to not use Rand's S3, except at the very start, it's safe to use it there, but to not use Rand's S3 until the boss is stealthed. And if he's stealth with a barrier, you soul burn Rand. Okay, let's talk about Secretary Vera. So, Vera, I know you guys are missing using Mascot Hazel now that Rift is gone, so we're going to bring her back on the team. And this is a great, great fight for Lilius. If you don't have Lilius, she's not required. She's just really nice. If you don't have Lilius, any other AoE DPS unit would work fine. Fire Charlotte is a great option. Everybody should have Mercedes. And everybody should have Mascot Hazel. So those two are kind of required. The other two units, there's some diversity in options. I prefer... Edward Elric as my principal DPS. If you do not have Ed, you could use Roy. If you do not have Ed or Roy, you could use Sermia. You do not have Ed Roy or Sermia, you could use Fire Ravi. If you do not have Ed Roy, Sermia, or Fire Ravi, you could use Politus. <laughs> okay. I think you're picking up what I'm laying down. Can you use Zealot Carmen Rose for science? I could, but Ed is so much better. But Zealot Carmen Rose would work just fine too. What makes Ed better is on stage three, the boss takes more damage the more extra attacks you do. And extra attacks are dual attacks or counter attacks or just plain your attack does an extra attack. Since Ed constantly splashes back, he stacks that up. But you know what? You, you said for science and I, I am a man of science, even though I prefer Ed in this, we will use Zealot and make this as free to play as possible. Um, I know Fire Lilies is a, is a three star, or sorry, a five star, but any AOE damage, and I, I do say AOE because you want some ability to um, push through the first stage. Now, I do like Xeon in this fight if you are not taking a defense breaker. We are not taking a defense breaker, so you want Xeon on the team. He is going to be our defense breaker, and that's what will let us push through phase two super fast. 
Oh, let's look at the units. Two hundred percent ER. That's all she needs. She doesn't need to be this tanky, not by a long shot. Speed doesn't matter. Artifact doesn't matter. I like this one because the boss does debuff you a lot, so you'll get some CR pushes out of it. But you know what? Let's uh let's put her on a more responsible artifact. Eh, could put her on Harpa. Extra cleanses. I'm just gonna put her on Geist Crystal for a little extra healing. It doesn't matter. Any artifact is going to work fine on her. She doesn't. Uh, the only thing she needs is the 200 ER. So if you're a little bit shy on the ER, use an artifact that gives you some additional ER to get you over the 200% threshold, right? Next is Lilius. Ideally, you want a crit damage Lilius, right? Some Somebody who is going to help clear those mobs on the first stage. She's also here as a cleanse unit, so she doesn't need the crit damage. Her primary use is the dual attacks, which remember, dual attacks stack damage in the final phase, making it easier to clear. So that's her primary thrust is dual attacks. So if you can't put crit damage on her, don't crit damage on her, but if you can get crit damage on her, it'll make this even faster. Um, since I am mostly worried about her clearing the small mobs, Daydream Joker is not as big of a deal for me, so I have her on Portrait of the Saviors to assist with some damage. Why not the Dragon Arty? Dragon Arty would work fine. I didn't use the Dragon Arty because the Dragon Arty um, doesn't really help me out that much at 341 crit damage. Let's has an 85% chance to increase the crit damage of the caster. A crit damage buff would only give me 9% more crit damage. Now, if you're going to run her at 300% crit damage and then use the Dragon Arty to get the last 50%, that's great. But remember, crit damage buff will not overcap crit damage. So it only give me 9% more damage. So Portrait's kind of better for my build. But if your build is under 300 crit damage, Dragon Arty definitely the better way to go. Standard traditional Mercedes, you want her on her own artifact. No other artifact is going to be as useful for this. Other than that, just build her with as much damage as you can. You only need 85% crit chance because Vera is green. But the small mobs are not green, so getting her as close to 100 as possible makes it a little cleaner. And our principal DPS unit. As I said before, I prefer running Edward Elric here. You can run Sermia, you could run Ravi, you could run Charlotte, you could run Roy, you could run Edward, you could run a whole host of DPS units in this back spot. Ideally, you want DPS units that have counters or extra attacks to make the final stage easier, but for science, we all love science. We're going to run Zealot Carmen Rose. I have her on Caladra because that's going to give even more damage than Daydream Joker at plus 30%. This is just my standard expedition Carmen Rose. Run whoever you want in your damage dealing slot. This is a lot of damage, as Vandal Strike just said. This is a lot of damage, but it may be overkill. All you need to do is to make sure she's got enough damage to take Vera down before Vera takes you down. In this one, unlike all of the others so far, the Guardian is important. If you are not running a Defense Breaker on your team, and I mean a very reliable Defense Breaker, and even if you are, don't risk RNG. Take Zeon. He, he is what makes this safe. Zeon is a 100% guaranteed, no 15%, no, no worrying about it not sticking. He guarantees Defense Break. And you will need that to clear stage two quickly. Okay, Vera does her thing, puts debuffs on everybody. Which your Lilius can cleanse. Watch how hard this hits because of the crit damage. Watch those little ads. 
<laughs> okay, um, nobody's hurt. Screw it. I'm going to S3, and I'm going to choose to give it to Harmon Rose. If you just double-click her S3, it will give the gab randomly. But you can select who gets the gab by clicking on the unit. So if you want the greater attack buff to go to Carmen Rose, you click Carmen Rose. You want it to go to Mercedes, you click Mercedes. I'm going to give it to Carmen Rose. A lot of people say I'm wrong on this every single time. Gab on Carmen Rose. I'm not wrong on this. It always goes on who you click it on. See, even in chat right now, Vandal Strike said, doesn't it go to the highest attack? No. It goes to the unit you click on every single time. This should clear. And now that the little buggers are done, you can start hitting Vera. You cannot hit Vera with a single target attack while any of her friends are up or she will go nuts. Now remember, every time you hit Vera, she gets this mystery of life. You'll notice uh, when I hit her... Um, well, it's just S2, so we don't waste a hit. When I hit her here, it'll say Mystery of Life times 3. When she gets to Mystery of Life times 5, she will self-CR push to the front of the line and attack. So there's Mystery of Life 2, Mystery of Life 3, Mystery of Life 4, Mystery of Life 5, and she CR pushes the front of the line and counterattacks. So you can't slow roll this. She will eventually bring the adds back. You want to make sure that you are ready with your AOE attacks to clear the adds a second time because you rarely get to phase two right away. And that's okay. You don't want to get to phase two right away. You want to build up souls for Xeon. And we're actually doing so much damage with Zealot Carbon Rose. We might have an issue building up souls for Xeon. Okay, I think I found an issue with Zealot Carmen Rose, and that's that we don't have a uh, we don't have a reliable defense breaker, and we're not going to have enough souls to do Zeon. Oh well, we'll figure it out. Maybe we just do this without worrying about the souls. S three, this should do pretty significant damage. Remember, you can't single target attack Vera when her friends are up or she'll wipe your whole team. So we'll attack the spider here. And this should finish off the adds. Brigitte's already on Mascot Hazel. Not a bad idea to build up some souls. You notice I just double clicked her mascot Hazel's S3 there. I double clicked it. It gave the gab to Mercedes this time instead of Carmen Rose. If you want it to target go to somebody, you need to pick who it goes to. Okay, this pushes phase. Normally, this is where we could drop Zeon to get defense breaks. We're just going to hope that we can burst him down. Oh, nice pulling the Soul Weaver. Good job. Don't pull the Soul Weaver. Again, you pull the Soul Weaver again. Magic for friends. Speed down. That should help a little bit. We'll burn for increased damage dealt on this because we're starving for damage here. Good 
Good timing on the cleanse. If I burn this, it extends the duration, but these little SOBs strip. So I don't want to waste souls burning this to extend the duration only to have them strip it. So I'm just going to give this to Carmen Rose. Damn, she hits hard with that gab. Who needs to Yeah, I see. Did you see him strip the gab right off of her? Little bastards. We'll put this back with uh, her S3 that'll give attack buff. It's not gab, but still works. Um, nobody's hurt. We'll just S1 the ad. Please don't pull Mascot Hazel. Thank you. Who needs, who needs defense break? Once again, the Guardian is just along for the ride. Who needs defense break? You need to get this health bar down around 15% or lower. Because when she takes a turn and she has her ultimate up, the egg will hatch and it'll do AoE fixed damage to your whole team. And it'll hit hard. The damage that she does is reduced the lower her health is. If you're 15% or below, you'll be able to survive the pop. If you take her all the way down to zero, she'll hatch automatically and the pop damage is like 500 damage. It's, it's not a lot. So we're in good shape here, even without the defense break. We clear, she hatches, here's the pop, 800 damage to all my units. Now, for this final stage, you will do increased damage every time you do an extra hit. Now watch when I do this extra hit, watch for the words that appear over top of Vera. There, damage suffered increases. It was fast, so it was hard to see, but here's another one. Damage suffered increases times two. Uh, let's... Nobody's hurt. I'm just going to S1 and add here. We'll strip and slow. Or not, though, slow's on her S2. My bad. So this should hit twice. There's once and... Oh, nope, it didn't proc. Here we go again. S1. Bam. Damage suffered times three. So these are starting to hit hard. That was a 25k hit with attack down. <laughs> Where's Mercedes skills? Her S3 is ready, so we'll go ahead and get put Gab on Zealot. Man, I just got done putting the Gab on her and she stripped it. Rude. Fire Dingo is another good option for cleanse and extra attack. I like it. It was a 37k damage S1 attack there. Now we're up to damage suffered times 4. Now we're up to damage suffered times 5. Damage suffered times 6. <laughs> Damage suffered times seven. You guys remember when Zealot Carmen Rose's S1 did 37k damage a few minutes ago? Watch this. 41k damage. It really starts adding up quick.
I think we're up to times eight. We're doing 41k damages on S1s now. It's just a matter of time before Vera falls apart. Burn extra damage. No. Okay, this hit's gonna be sweet. Sixty-seven K damage and there was no debuffs for my rage set to proc. That would have been well over a hundred K if there had been a debuff there. But anyway, pretty solid Vera team. I, you know what? Um I really like Carmen Rose. I didn't need a defense breaker. I didn't need to wander around and get souls for Xeon or have to stall the fight to get souls for Xeon. Karma Rose just let me burst it straight down, so that was kind of fun. And she has S1 healing too. Nice, nice. I forgot about that. Her S1 is does have life steal built into it. Okay, so Devour Arahawken. For this team, we're going to run Carrot as our principal debuffer. Carrot is there to stack burns. You need multiple debuffs of the same type on the spiders to be able to get enhanced damage on them. Whether they're burns or bleeds, all that matters is that you have multiple of the same. One bird, one bleed, not going to work. Two burns would work, two bleeds would work. Carrot is loaded with, with burns, and the nice thing about Carrot is with Etika Scepter, she'll cycle her skills really quickly, and her passive makes her relatively immune to being stunned. So because of that, we'll put her in the front. All that ma matters is that she um, has enough speed to cycle her skills. The spiders do not have any effect resistance, so don't worry about stacking any effectiveness on her. If you do not have Etika Scepter, consider Prophetic Candlestick. It will likewise help cycle her skills. Next, I'm going to use Akades as the Soul Weaver. Akades needs to have as close to 200 effect resistance as possible. I know she's at 144, but her S3 skill will give her an effect resistance buff. That'll be an additional 50, taking her up to 194. Living a little dangerously, if you can get that 200 effectiveness mark or 150 prior to the skill, that would be ideal. I do have a 6% chance of getting stunned and defense broken. Hopefully it all works out. Um, you know, if you want to be really, really safe, you can put her on an artifact that boosts her effect resistance there we go guardian ice crystal additional 15 percent effect resistance now she's immune to stuns don't at me over this ras i know this is a terrible ras this is my wyvern 13 ras i just changed his ring from an attack ring to an effectiveness ring I know you're wondering why on earth I would build a destruction set Ross, and it's simply to make my Wyvern 13 team 100%. That's why he's also on this artifact. Um, but I, I, I changed him to an effectiveness ring because you want the 85% effectiveness to really, really stick the defense breaks. So, Commandal Arena, I've just got on a good solid Rage Pen set. Have her on a little bit of bulk so she doesn't die to a sneeze. Other than that, speed, effect, resistance, effectiveness, none of that matters. Just build her with damage. Devour Arahawken is susceptible to um, Daydream Joker, so you can use that. If you uh, want to leave her on Our Beautiful Seasons, that'll work as well. But Daydream Joker will let you burst him down even faster. Okay, so at the start of the fight, we use the S3. The goal is to get two or more of the same buffs. In this case, burns on the spiders. As long as they're wearing two burns, they will take extended damage. Now, this bottom one only got one burn, so we won't do as much damage. Watch when Ross S3s, you'll see significantly harder hit on the number one spider than on the number two spider. Even though the top one didn't crit, it was 2,000 more damage on a missed crit than on a crit. We're going to S3, even though nobody's hurt, I'm S3ing so I can get my effect resistance buff, and that will get me enough ER where I will not be stunned, stripped, or anything like that. The spider's AoE hit, and one of the nice things about the spider's AoE hitting is they will pick up a burn off of 
Carrot's it's passive, so now I have two burns on all of them. You'll notice when Devourer hit Carrot, it said stun over her, but she's not stunned. That's her passive working where she cleanses the first debuff that hits her, and that's why I like her in front. She's most likely to get hit and most likely to avoid getting stunned. You do not want to use Carrot's S1 into the spiders. We want to leave the burns up. Um, we'll hit this spider here because this one's got a defense buff up. Two here. Reapply the burns with carrot. Now that the spiders are down, devour our hawk, and as soon as he takes a turn, we'll lose his defense mitigation. And we'll be able to push into the second half of this fight. There are auto teams for doing all of the bosses. I would have to make a very long video demoing those or skip a lot of the stuff that happens in them. Uh, they're not super reliable and they take a very, very long time. You only have to do this once a month. I would rather spend five minutes on each boss just getting them done. But if you really, really, really want to use auto teams, maybe I'll make a video showing how those work. Uh, let me know in the comments section if you really, really want to see an incredibly slow way to beat this on auto. I'm happy to put it together for you. Okay, Ross, show me a defense break. Of course not. Ross, you are terrible at your job. Okay, I think I might be able to kill it. So I'm going to burn S3. Into an S1. Oh, wait, this will heal him. Okay, Ross, show me a defense break. Ross, you are terrible at your job. Every time the spiders attack, they heal the lowest health unit, which right now, unfortunately, is the Devourer himself. I know this is kind of a waste. I don't get any buffs from it. I'm doing it mostly for the uh, souls. God, the spider's going to heal him again. Ugh, so frustrating. Rass missing two defense breaks is so disappointing.
Okay, Ross. Three times is a charm. 60% defense break. Show us what you got. Ross, why are you so terrible? You know this game is literally called Epic 7 because Ross is bad at his job. Okay. I'm just going to burn and push phase. Now that he's below 50%, pushes him back out of the phase. Carrot got stunned there because she had already cleansed one debuff. Now we gotta deal with the spiders healing the devourer back up again. Don't fret too much about that happening because he once, once you've pushed this phase once, you don't have to worry about it again. Now when we go below 50%, he stays below 50% and we were able to just kill him off. So this will heal him up a little bit. No biggie. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this front spider so he doesn't get healed more though. That one. Now we're into the next break phase. Ross, show, show, show me that, that I was wrong about you. Show me that you can actually stick a defense break. I know it took you seven tries to save the world, but show me that it's only going to take six tries to defense break this mob. <sighs> Ross, you're such a disappointment. <laughs> Okay, to keep them from healing, Devour, I want to hurt one of these guys lower than about 48% health. So I'm just going to hit this front one. Um, oops, I maybe hurt him a little too hard. Okay, Ross. This is, this is what? This is your seventh try? Is this sixth or seventh? I think this is seventh. Must have been the sixth. <laughs> Holy crap, Ross. Can you be any worse at this? How many how many 60% have we missed now? 6. Epic 7th Ross. Oh my god. He got it on the seventh hit. <laughs> there is nothing hard to this fight, right? It's not that it is, it's not that you're going to fail if you miss the defense break. It's not that you're going to lose if you don't manage the spiders right. It's just annoyingly long. If you get the defense break right out of the gate, I've cleared this in under five minutes. If you don't get any defense breaks, like good old epic seventh defense break Ross here, it's going to take a little longer. But it is a safe fight. Nobody likes it because it's not a fun fight. It's a slow fight. It's an annoying fight. But it always clears. So between this and Queen, I think these are the two easiest fights to do. But there you go. That is my um, updated guide for Labyrinth. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it helps you guys clear this out. If you have team ideas for any of the other fights, put them in the comments section. Let everybody know your ideas. I'm sure people look for substitutions. If you have any questions, ask them directly or join my Discord to DM me and I'll see what I can do to help you out. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great one, everybody.